It is that time to go through another team individual mock draft and we are going to be fixing the Chicago Bears today. And what does that mean? We talk about it. We got to go through the roster, see what's been working so far this season for Matt Eberflus and this team and what hasn't been working most importantly and how can we fix this team going into next season. And, and that includes off-season plans, free agency, who should be re-signed, who should be let go. So we'll go through all of that and then we'll eventually get into that mock draft. But how are you doing? What is cooling with you? I hope you're having a good day. We got on the road here for the Chicago Bears and see what we can do. So let's go ahead and fix them. I'm ready to fix them. I don't know, man. I think they, I'm surprised how well they're doing. They got a bit of a tough schedule coming up, but I think there's some optimism for sure. Matt Eberflus, he has done a good job so far and it's a good running team too, I will say, but let's go and talk about the offense first and foremost. Giving you a little, uh, you know, vibe on the the grades and stuff like that. Here are my ranking scales. Again, take it with a little bit of grin and salt. I just do what I do with my rankings. They ain't perfect, but I do watch the football games and stuff like that. I watch the football. I don't know how that makes sense, but nonetheless, here are the rankings for it and this offense. Let's talk about a team and needs as we slide right in for the offense side first and foremost. To me, it's surrounding Justin Fields with weapons. It was great to see that the Bears and Luke Getze actually built a game around Justin Fields in this past one versus New England. It really was his best game, I think, overall in the season. I mean, that one interception, but it was a tip. So, I mean, overall, that this it was good to see, and hopefully they continue that going forward versus Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots, which, again, their defense, even though maybe not as good as it has been in past years, it's still Bill Belichick, and I think they did a great job scheming to that. And get Justin Fields on the move, give him some actual uh, read options as a quarterback, design runs and things like that, because he brings such an element there in the quarterback game that most players just don't bring. I mean, he's only he's in like that top three, top four quarterback rushing ability multipliers, however you want to look at it, because he is one of the best 4'4", 220 pounds. Like the dude is an animal when he's running, man. It's hard to top, stop this guy. So get him in some design runs, get him on the move. And that was good to see there. So with Justin Fields, I'm still got to see him get a little bit more comfortable in and out of the pocket, reading, quickening up those decisions is something we we just haven't it's not there yet but he needs playmakers you can tell he's just not comfortable throwing to his receivers at the moment even if they're slightly open or if he's there like he should be throwing it there's just not that ability yet and that's why he's a little bit lower on my rankings but we you know hopefully it was some development and we bring in some weapons we've seen Jalen Hurts improve in that department and I think Justin Fields could be even better than that because I think he's got even more tools and ability so we'll see but I'm not ready to give up on Justin Fields then you go into the running back situation David Montgomery Khalil Herbert have both been really good there's a reason why this is maybe the best running uh, back uh, duo, uh, I mean, in terms of just duos and the uh, the way that this team's work, this is a really good rushing team with Justin Fields helping you out, David Montgomery, Khalil Herbert, running those two in the back tandem. It's really good. This is a good running team. So you got to give them credit there and what they've been able to do, Luke Getze. Yes, David Montgomery is a free agent. I would love to bring him back because I do think he's a good player, but I'm not looking to pay him like 10 plus million dollars. If you can get him somewhere in that six to eight range or, you know, maybe nine or whatever, like definitely get Montgomery back because he's a good player and he adds enough in a receiving game too. So I think you can keep him if possible. But if not, Glue Herbert definitely is a starting level running back. Great vision, good balance, good running back in general. Maybe not crazy speed, but he's got solid enough burst to be able to go in the open. A wide receiver, I talk about Mooney's playing better and that is huge. Equinemia St. Brown's okay, definitely not terrible. Dante Pettis, we you know we need to upgrade, no doubt about it. Nikhil Harry and uh, Velas Jones is a rookie, gotten some you know a couple plays here and there and and whatnot on some jet sweeps and stuff, but haven't seen tons just yet. Again, he's only played like 30 snaps so far or something like that on the season. We need to see more. Brian Pringle's been out, so they need to improve the receiving core. Is it uh, you know it's pretty self-explanatory. Other than Darnell Mooney, we need more weapons on this within this receiving game. To help Justin Fields out and maybe to speed up those things because it's like, yo, I got this guy here. Uh, uh, tight end wise, Cole Komet's fine, no big deal. I mean, he's he's a starting-ish level. I put him maybe a little bit lower, might have to move up there, but 
he, he's an okay tight end. I wouldn't say he's a guy like if you saw someone crazy on the board, then you could upgrade from him. But at the moment, he's under contract. I'm not looking to move or upgrade the position. However, you have a couple of free agents, Ryan Griffin, Tevin Wesco. We could add in a some help in free agency slash a backup late in the draft to go in there and be a developmental piece behind Cole Komet. Offensive line-wise is interesting, right? It is interesting. The unit actually might be able to continue to get better and they you know they've had their struggles throughout the season okay let's be frank with it it has been rough at times they're really coming off one of their better games Larry Borum had probably his worst game against uh, Matthew Judon but Matthew Judon's also taken a lot of offensive tackles this season he's been really good definitely going to be up there in all pros and stuff like that but Larry Borum nonetheless I do think he's a starting level player and Braxton Jones had his best game of the season now, do I need to move him up a little bit? Yeah, I probably do. This was before I ranked him right before I did. I watched the New England game or right before the New England game, pardon me. So I probably need to move Braxton Jones up a little bit, maybe like a 67 or something, probably move him up a couple of points because he was really good in the New England game. Like, I don't know if he even surrendered a pressure or whatever, but he looked good too just from watching the game. I thought he was really solid out there. So good to see with Braxton, man. I don't know. We'll see. Southern Utah player has all the tools at 6'5", 10 athletic ability even the size it's just a matter of the technique sort of thing getting down with him which is something that they can teach and get him better at that so I do think he can be a starter I do think he has that upside but again he's going to need some time and we'll see if he can get it to be that story now I still think we should bring in some more help in free agency so that way we're not banking on it I mean they need more help in general so that's going to be something to look at into your offense line I think you're in good shape at least at guard I would love to bring back Michael Schofield who's actually been playing at left guard with Cody White here Lucas Patrick both being injured now IR for both of those guys uh, Cody Whitehair might be able to come back here soon I forget what the injury is but I think he's designated to be able to come back soon Sam Mustafer absolutely need to upgrade from Mustafer. he's a decent run blocker all these guys are actually good run blockers they really are everybody out here is good run blockers and there's a reason why they're opening up some holes in the run game pass protection on the other hand has been a struggle some in a lot of areas but nonetheless, Tevin Jenkins is kind of a fit right in there at the right guard position. And I think that's a good place for him going forward. Cody White here, when he comes back, still under contract. You can keep him. A little expensive, but it's fine. He's a good solid guard for you and a good pass protector. Lucas Patrick, you can keep him as a swing guy, but I'm not looking to keep him. I know they were potentially moving him over to center, but obviously with that injury, I think Sam Mustafer is going to stay there for the time being. Michael Schofield will be your left guard for the rest of the season, I would imagine, until Cody White here comes back. But no matter what, you need to improve the offensive line. I think free agency would be the best area to try to go after this because you have some youth. Now it's maybe time to add in someone more of an established player if you can. Doesn't mean you go crazy and spend tons of money unless it's like there, but that is kind of my recommendation at the point. And we'll get more into that in free agency. Let's go into the defense though, and we'll talk about the same thing. Looking at the roster and some of the rankings here and the free agents that you got coming up. The big question is Roquan Smith. Absolutely. So we'll see what we want to do. Alan Williams, I thought, has done a good job with these rookies, and we're starting to see some of that come to fruition. Again, these rookies had their best game in New England. You saw Kyler Gordon make a nice interception. He got beat a little bit, but he caught up without that speed, made that interception, and basically was a clincher. Jaquan Brisk after getting kicked in the nuts. Oh, man, Mac attack. What are you doing, man? Uh, nonetheless, he made him pay. Brisker making him, you know, really looks, oh, I got to pick it off. I got to get you back, Mac. He did. And uh, Jack, nonetheless, let's get on here to the actual team and needs. And for me personally, there's definitely questions like, do we bring back Roquan Smith? And we'll talk about that more in free agency. I would love to bring back Roquan Smith, really good player. But do I want to pay him 18 plus million dollars when I feel like they've got other areas of need? That becomes a question. So we'll see what we can do. And we'll talk more about that. No matter what, you probably need a little bit more linebacker. Help. But for me, okay, this is where it all starts, right? You have to, if you do not improve these two positions in the draft, you have failed, right? Or free agency for the Chicago Bears and Ryan Pools. You must improve the defensive line and the receiving unit. Those areas are first round needs, first, second round needs. You have to improve them. So best available receiver, best available defensive lineman, interior or edge, have to improve it. Obviously with um, Robert Quinn now being gone, you need to look to improve the edge position. And hopefully, Travis Gibson or Dominique Robinson can kind of fill that role and really step up and be a full time player. Gibson's been, you know, had his moments. Same thing with Robinson in flashes as pass rushers so far. But 
again, they get more of a full-time chance to see what they have and what they can bring to this defense. They are going to really need them to step up now with Robert Quinn gone. Now, granted, Robert Quinn has not been great this season. That's why I thought they did a great job getting a fourth-round pick, moving on from that money. Not a bad job at all by Ryan Poole, so I do like that. People say, oh, you could get more. I don't think so, man. I thought they did a good job getting him for a fourth-round pick from the Eagles for a team that's looking to win now and everything like that, so not bad at all. Anyway, uh, defensive line, number one priority for me and whatnot. Um, and then you go on to the cornerback situation. At this point, it's just finding depth, right? You got Jalen Johnson, Kendall Vildor, who's played decent enough, too. I mean, he's been he's been a solid starter. Matt Eberflus does a good job, too, in his system. Allen Williams coming over from Indian, Indiana as well. They, they, they've done well, especially they've utilized these young players and they've been able to put them in good positions. Kyler Gordon stepping up. You have Jaquan Brisker making plays, of course. A nice little one-hand snag by Brisker. And then Gordon even got in the action later, kind of clinching the game with that nice interception first New England, catching up with that speed that he got. And I think he's going to be good. I think both of those guys are going to be foundation pieces for them going forward. But you do have to look at Jalen Johnson, Kendall Vildor being free agents next year. Or not, you know, 2023, but being in 2024 draft. So adding a corner like in the fourth, fifth, sixth round or somewhere in that range as a developmental piece, if you were to let go of Vildor Johnson, obviously you can do a free agency and things like that, but you can always look beyond and what you want to do there. But yeah, that's that's a late, later need. You got your corners at least in place in terms of starters. Same thing with safeties. Eddie Jackson, Jaquan Brisker have been really rocking. We'll see. Eddie Jackson could be a trade candidate if they want to. The Buffalo Bills might give him a call. It's a possibility. And if they throw out a second round pick or even, you know, first round or for Eddie Jackson if they get desperate. You never, hey, you gotta you gotta be aware for that. So keep an eye out on that possibility. But Eddie Jackson been playing like his former self, been a really good season for Eddie Jackson, making a ton of plays. And then finally we talked a little bit, you know, about the linebacking core already with Roquan Smith. Nicholas Morrow's fine too. He's a quality kind of bridge starter for them. Matthew Adams, I, I actually thought he was gonna be more, you know, with before the injury. I think he was a guy that, you know, could definitely step up and be that third linebacker for them in those base packages. It's unfortunate, but coming over from Indianapolis, he's got a lot of potential to be someone who can actually stick on a roster as a backup solid rotational piece. And, and we're still, if they bring him back on a cheap deal, I could definitely see that happening. Besides that, Jack Sanborn, maybe a guy later on can, you know, be developed into a nice quality backup or a rotation piece as well. Joe Thomas has kind of been stepping up there and, and everything is that third linebacker for the time being. So linebacker, definitely a need with Roquan and Nicholas Morrow being free agents. Maybe we can address in a free agency with some other pieces that we can add, but I just, I think the defensive line risk. But going now into free agency and cap space, which they have a massive 116 plus a million dollars macaronis to help them out. And Ryan Poole is getting the money forward. He's like, yo, I'm looking ahead. We need to make sure we're rebuilding this team and they're going to have to add some key pieces in free agency along with the draft. So let's start out with the strategy with this money that they do have. And it becomes the question, do you bring back again Roquan Smith? I I'm going back and forth on this. Yes, I love Roquan. He's a great player, but it just, it all depends on the number, right? If he's helpful, taking a team discount, which I don't know if he's going to be, at least at the, the word and by the sounds of it, then I would definitely be looking to trade him at this, you know, before the trade deadline. Even if you just can get a second rounder, it would help because you can go out and maybe get a serviceable linebacker like, you know, Henry Totoa or Jack Campbell in the second round to help you out, replace Roquan Smith, get him on that cheap contract rather than pay Roquan Smith that $18 million. So that is something that you have to look at. I would imagine it's going to be at least $15 million for Roquan Smith. So that would, you have the money. I mean, you've got plenty of cap space. You can definitely do it. You could you see him as a valuable, you know, core piece going on. You know, he's only 25 years old, I believe. So having Roquan Smith would be great. Same thing with David Montgomery. I would love to have David Montgomery, but if he's asking for more than $10 million, then that is a little bit too expensive. I think Khalil Herbert can easily step up and you could pick up a Boston Scott or there's so many other options you can pick up in free agency for around that two to $4 million mark to be a great backup for Khalil Herbert, who I think could easily start for you. Now, someone who I'd love to bring back, Michael Schofield, who brings that versatility on your offensive line at guard, and he's a solid 
bridge starter again that you can come in there he may not be the greatest player but he's a good non-liability basically in pass protection and he's not a bad run blocker either so having Michael Schofield it definitely helps out bring him back for a couple million dollars definitely worth it doing if he's cool with coming back and then Armin Watts DeAndre Houston Carson also guys just good rotation pieces on your roster that I would love to bring back on to the team Cut options. I don't know if you really need to cut anybody, to be honest with you. I, these are just some options. The Bears don't have a whole ton of cut options, so I just put whatever's available. I don't really think you need to cut any of these guys. Al Quinn and Muhammad's a solid player, and I'd ideally love him as a rotational player. But for the time being, in this rebuild mode, you're kind of looking at guys like that and saying, "Hey, he can get the you know do a decent job for us, and he's a good uh, hustler and all those things. Got a good motor to him." And then Justin Jones hasn't had the greatest season, so you could look to move on from him if you do, and you could say 4.9 million dollars there, or Luca, Lucas Patrick if you go out and draft someone early, or if you let someone uh, bring someone in free agency. Now, speaking of free agency, right with that 160 million dollars, here's my strategy first and foremost. So we talked about Boston Scott, if you let go of David Montgomery, I think that'd be a good option or just somebody like that, right? There's a lot of running backs, free agents you can go pick up for a cheap price. You know, Ronald Jones could be a nice backup running back for them too. Uh, now here's someone I would love to do. Marvin Jones, right? Would be a nice, solid, like he's been consistent throughout his career. Yes, he's older, but bringing him in here, that veteran leadership to maybe this young receiving core as they continue to get more or get younger and we're going to look to add a piece in the draft, right? So what you want to do is maybe bring in an established guy like Marvin Jones who you just know he's been this outside winner and he can help out Justin Fields on those one-on-ones you know, on the perimeter, bringing someone like Marvin Jones would not be a bad option for five to $7 million. It's not going to cost you too much. And I'm not looking to go out and spend big time dollars on, you know, a DJ Chark or a Juju Smith Schuster or any of those guys. Cause like, you know, the problem in free agency with receivers is typically you don't see a number one receiver walk in free agency. You have to trade a first round pick for one of those guys. And this receiver class in free agency is not great. So I just think it'd be better to use one of those early picks on a receiver and get talent there and hopefully find a number one for your offense rather than spending, you know, 10 plus million dollars on a, on a receiver that I just don't think is going to be that huge of an impact. Whereas I think some of these players that we'll talk about could be a bigger impact for them going forward. So that's my view on it. Bringing an established player like Marvin Jones, who's been really solid throughout his career and I think he'd fit that, you know, what they were they could be looking for there. Dan Arnold, just a backup tight end, right? I mean, that's really what it is. And then here's the thing with offensive tackle. This is one of those things where you have to keep. And it's also one of those things, I'll say this. Uh, it depends on how what they see from Braxton Jones, right? It seems like they really like him and what he's been putting in in the practices. I don't get to see that and whatnot in the media. But if you really feel good about Braxton Jones then that's great. Then I still recommend, though, you bring in somebody to come in there and be a swing tackle, if nothing else, right? To come in and be able to, in a pinch, be able to start for one of those guys for injuries or if you're struggling, right? Because I do think that Larry Borum is a quality starter. I think he's got some limitations in terms of like his upside of being like a top five, top 10 tackle. I think he's a quality starter, but maybe not, you know, like I said, that elite talent, elite tackle because of those maybe limitations athletically and all those things. But again, he's really molded and gotten better and he continues to improve. I'm not ready to bank on it just yet, but bringing in a George fan, an Andre Dillard who maybe has some upside down the line, who knows, right? Or just someone like that. If you want to spend big dollars, you could do it at this position. If you really don't feel good about your tackle situation, you do need to make sure you're keeping Justin Fields upright. You could try to look and find a free agent. I know you got um, uh, Orlando Brown out there, but I don't know. You know, again, those are options. I'd maybe rather bring in a George fan who has ability to play at the right side and left side. And he's really been injured all season. So he hasn't been playing great. He's on IR too for the Jets, but maybe you can get him for a steal on a one, two year deal to help out at least nothing else, some depth on the offensive line. And then center, right? Here's some different options, some different criteria, depending on how you view this center. But I like this center class. So I'm not really looking necessarily to spend huge amounts of money. But if you do say, hey, look, we're going to try to add a different piece in the offensive line or, you know, in the draft because we like someone else. 
then you might want to sign an Ethan Posick, who's played well this season for the Browns. Maybe it's a little bit of their scheme, too, so take that with a grain of salt. But he's gotten better over the past couple of years in his career. Connor McGovern from the Jets is a free agent, too, this year. You could get him on a one, two-year deal around $8 million a season. That's an option. He could be a plug-and-play. I think he would fit the system, too, for the Bears. Jake Brendel's more of a cheap option from the 49ers. He could come in there. Again, I think he'd fit the system. And he's a guy who is a decent enough pass protector. I think he could hold up there on the interior for you. Maybe not the craziest run blocker, but he can get the job done in the pass game. So there's some options for you. And then on the defense side of the ball, here's a couple of strategies again. You either go out and spend big on a pass rusher, right? Like on a Bradley Chubb or a Yannick Ngakwe, finding that guy off the edge to be a, be a good pass rusher for you. That, for me, is not quite where I'm at at the moment. I prefer more of maybe a Houston Texan approach with this, and I'd rather get some numbers in here with like a Chase Winovich, a Charles Amenehew, combined with a Dominique Robinson, a Travis Gibson, having those guys, and then also an established veteran, bringing a Melvin Ingram to this pass rushing group for on a four five, uh, to five, you know, six, seven million dollar deal. I think that would be a good option. But hey, you know, if you want to bring in a Bradley Chubb, if he's wanting to come on over here, there's been little injuries, but he's going to command that 14 to 17 million dollars. You have to utilize your cap. I think for them, what they're going to do, I'd rather spend my money on like Deron Payne. I think that would be huge, especially with the way Matt Eberflus values that three tech. And Deron Payne, David Ajamada could be really good options for them. Deron Payne would be dope. But yeah, you're going to have to pay $10, $14 million a season, probably. Right? He's going to command a good amount on the open market if Washington is unable to re-sign him. But they could also give him the franchise tag. So that might be something you have to look at. But David Ajamada might be a free agent. So you could look at him after missing out on Larry Ogunjobi. That would be a nice signing. I mean, you got Shai Chuttle out there, too, as a free agent. So you just kind of take a look, see who's available. Bradley Chubb probably get franchise tagged. Yannick Ngakwe could walk. But those are options. You just have to kind of see which one's the best available between the two, which one can you bring in, and then you take that approach into the draft. And that's always what it is, right? Same with Chris Warmly could be a nice option if you're looking a little bit more budget. But he's been a really good player for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Linebacker-wise, um, this one also very much depends on Roquan Smith. If you let go of Roquan Smith, then it opens the door. Maybe you can get a Devin Bush or a Tremaine Edmonds or whoever else walks, right? You have to take a look at all that and see what you can do. But I think Aziz Aljahir, if you were to lose someone like Nicholas Morrow, he'd be able to fit right into that role. I think he'd be in a, a good, solid uh, put into this defense. So I like him and what he could do and be a scheme fit for them. And then Mike Hughes as a fourth corner would be great. I mean, I know he struggled a little bit there for the Detroit Lions this season, but in a scheme change, I think in Matt Eberflus' defense, I feel like he'd be really, really good. And he'd be someone nice behind Kendall Vildor for you. So that's kind of my defensive philosophy. Hopefully we can get a big signing on the defensive line for us. And then maybe add a couple of small pieces as well to go on to that defensive line. Especially in the interior for sure. Draft time. That's right. It's NFL draft time. Let's go and get into the seven round mock draft for the Chicago Bears. And first off, let's take a look at the picks that they have. And these are the current updated picks. It's a range, right? It's still very early, right? I, I know they're currently picking 14th. I looked at their schedule. I think this team's going to win about six to seven games total if I had to take. So I think they'll win about three or four more games. Bit of a tough schedule, right? You've got Dallas this week and a lot of other tough opponents coming up. So that is what it is. We'll see how it all goes. And maybe they win more games than I think. But for the time being, I'm going to give them a 7 to 12 range. And we'll kind of be, you know, in that mix somewhere in that middle range. But here is just a little planned out philosophy for what I'm seeing going into the draft. It, it take a receiver, defensive line early in the draft. Those are priorities. Offensive line, those areas we have to improve. And if I don't, then I fail this draft. And that is my big thing going into it. So, and then later on, we can find a linebacker, maybe a corner. We talk about a developmental piece with Jalen Johnson and then also Kendall Fildor being free agents in 2024. So we have to look forward to that. So maybe finding a couple of guys in the mid to late rounds could help us out there. And then beyond that, right? I even put a long snapper because their long snapper, I think, is like 34. He might even be a free agent too. So, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. It's like Ryan, something like that. But either way, if you look at a long snapper, I think it's probably just, you know, unless it's like if we have nothing else to go, but we might want to keep looking at other positions, maybe pick someone out in UDFA land, all that. So yeah, it's a long snapper, but I had to put it out there. Let's get into the actual draft itself. Jackson, Smith, and Jigba at number nine overall, which is again, just where I'm projecting them at this moment. It's going to change. Here's some options and players that I think that they could be looking at at this pick in a big board, a little big board for them. You could look at Jackson, the Jigba, Jordan Addison, or Quentin Johnson, whoever's higher on your board. For me, 
I'm not right, you know, I know Jackson Smith and Jacob has been injured all season for the most part, right? He was back uh, this past week, but he uh, had to leave in the second quarter. Hamstring still bugging him, and you could tell for sure. It's affecting him in his game. So for Jackson Smith and Jigba, nothing's changed. He's still a great receiver, great separator, great hands. People are just dropping him down because he's not playing or because he, they think, oh, he doesn't have elite speed, and he doesn't have elite speed. That's fine. A lot of the great receivers in the NFL do not have elite speed. Michael Thomas has never had elite speed. Devontae Adams does not have elite speed. Now, yeah, those guys may have some other things too, but I think Jackson Smith and Jigba is a thousand-yard receiver. I really believe that. People are just kind of underrating that ability that he might just be a slot receiver, but they can utilize that, and he is such a good receiver. I'm not. I'm taking the best available. I think Quentin Johnson has more upside potentially of being a you know like this true X outside receiver. But to me, he's a developmental guy. I'd rather take later. Jackson Smith and Jigba. He'll be fine. Yes, the hamstring things. I guess it's a concern. There are a lot of receivers who have hamstring, like Julio Jones lately. Man, the hamstring things throughout his career have kind of plagued him, but. I think you don't, it's just don't let that bug you, man. He's such a good player. And yeah, I'm taking Jackson Smith and Jigba coming in here. Then we go on, and it's not just because of the Justin Fields connection. I really believe Jackson Smith and Jigba is the best receiver in the class. Then we go on to Jared Bersier, round number two. This guy's going to add that explosiveness that you lost maybe from Robert Quinn. And Jared, and, uh, Jared Burse, someone that might go higher. Absolutely, he's been getting first round buzz and first round draft capital. But I also look at it, some players are going to drop, right? There's a lot of good edge rushers in this class. I think there's easily five to six first round caliber edge rushers, maybe more even you could say, depending on how this season all fills out. So Verse could fall to them, or maybe they make a small trade up with that fourth rounder and get Jared Verse at the back end of the first round or do something or at the top of the second. But getting themselves a good edge rusher who can bring some explosiveness, I also think he'd be a good fit for them. Filling in maybe for like a, you know, I don't know, I'm thinking of the Colts term, but he, he wasn't even there with Yannick Ngakwe. But, uh, you know, hey, like Robert Quinn, like I said, just finding that replacement. I don't think he's too small to play in a 4-3. He plays with the sand and the dirt there at Florida State, and he's just fine. Maybe not the greatest run defender, but that's why you have, you know, all Quinn and Muhammad out there. You got to improve your interior defensive line. Maybe you keep Roquan Smith and he can help you out there. But nonetheless, I think getting in someone like Jared Burris, Andre Carter, whoever's the best available, right? You got Mike Morris maybe being available. There's a lot of guys who could be available. If Braylon Trace comes out this season, he would be a great option too here. So that's what I'm saying. There's a plethora of options. Zach Harrison, if he gets more playing time and continues, you know, kind of showing up, there's an option too for more of a strong side for three defense event. Multiple options. You could look at Gervin Dexter if he's available here. You could, you know, look at center like Luke Wimpler or, Luke, um, you know, someone like um, Sternberg or uh, Schmitz. I mean, John Michael Schmitz would be a good option too for them at this point. There's a lot of options, right? Ricky Stromberg, someone I really do like for them too. I think he'd be a good fit in their offense. I'm going Jared Verse, improving that edge position in the defensive line. And then our strategy would have been in free agency to get a good interior defensive tackle like a Deron Payne or a David Ajamata, right? Because then we get an edge player. You got David Ajamata as your free agent signing. And we'll also look to add more defensive tackle help later in this draft. But for the third pick here in the third round, we're going to take Jarrett Patterson out of Notre Dame. This guy is a plug and play guy. I know he's been playing a guard this season for Notre Dame. I think he's the center prospect in the NFL. Great pass protector. Not the strongest guy, but he's got good leverage, good ability to be able to play in this offense, in this, this system. Can zone block at a high level. Good functional IQ there. And he is just, again, really, really solid mover laterally to be able to be a pass protector. That's his game, right? He's just going to be a really solid pass protector. Decent enough anchor strength. It's not crazy anchor. That's why I don't think he's a guard. I think he'll be better at center and be able to help out, you know, with some of those double teams and things like that. So we're going to take a plug and play center here for the Chicago Bears. I think it's a big upgrade. And then into the fourth round, Keanu Benton. And dude, Benton, I think he's got potential to be a lot higher than this. But for the time being, at least where I'm seeing him go is more in this late third, fourth round range. And this is more towards the top of the fourth round anyway. But Benton out of Wisconsin has tools. That I could see this guy being, a, you know, a starter right away. Like he just, he needs to continue to work on his consistency as a pass rusher. Because sometimes I, I see him take plays off, but like when he flashes, he's got some crazy flashes. Got the length, got great strength, 
and he's got some good speed too at six foot four, three fifteen. A developmental guy, good solid mass and everything build on him. So he's a guy to keep an eye out on, but add some more help on that defensive line with that free agent when you bring in Jared Verse. We're at least building something on this defensive line. Now we go on to Dayon Hentley out of Washington State, formerly of Nevada. This guy has uh, you know been crushing it there at Washington State. Like he's been really balling out, been a big time piece for them in their defense making plays behind the backfield, sacks, decent coverage, you know, decent enough coverage skills, got good athleticism to him, good movement skills. So you're getting a guy at 6'2", 232, can come in there and compete for a job, especially if you were to lose Roquan Smith, then this guy's going to help be able to help you, you know, behind your, you know, free agent pickup that you've got, you know, for Roquan Smith instead. So Dayon Henley coming in, helping out this linebacking core, getting a little bit younger there. And then, Storm Duck, what a name. Wow, man, it's Storm and Ducks, watch out. Anyway, Storm Duck hasn't had the greatest season, but he still has developmental tools to be able to work with. And we've seen Matt Eberflus do it with guys like Isaiah Rogers, right, from UMass. And finding these guys, these smaller school guys, now he's not a smaller school guy, but nonetheless, Storm Ducks has those tools, ability, enough length, you know, to be able to be a guy that you can develop and hone in and whatnot. So that's what I'm thinking here with Storm Duck, just finding one of those type of guys. And that's what I think, it's a Matt Eberflus special. So that's what I'm doing, looking forward to the future here. And then we go on to Noah Gindolf. It sounds like Harry Potter. I'm waving my wand or something, but Gindolf, what a name, bro. I mean, come on, North Carolina, North Dakota State, tight end. He had the injury last year, comes back this season, been a little limited here and there. But anyway, guy who has some tools and, you know, some length and could be a backup tight end for you down the line. It's a seventh round pick, throwing darts at a small school tight end. And we go from there. This is really all it is, you know? Hey, on to our final pick. It's Luke Haggard from Indiana. Hey, I got to take a hometown special here, right? And he's could stay close to home into Chicago. <clears throat> Good pass protector. And he's got enough movement skills to get the job done. Maybe not the craziest run blocker, nothing like that, right? They don't run at IU. It's just that's not their MO, man. Bazelak, throw the ball 50, 60 times. Anyway, uh, Luke Hager going to be the guy, final pick here. Just adding more depth on the offense line, whether it's guard or tackle. Just maybe adding another piece. Wouldn't be a bad option to finish out the draft. So here are our draft picks and what we were able to do as we recap it all up. JSN, Jared Burst, Jared Patterson. And we got the J's going on here. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. I didn't intend that. No, there was no puns intended there. Keanu Benton, De Deon Henley, uh, Storm Duck, Noah Gindolf, and Luke Haggard rounds out the draft for the Chicago Bears. We take a look at the roster, some of the things we've been able to do. You look at this receiving core, way better in my opinion. Jackson Smith and Jigba can slide in the slot. Mooney has ability to play on the outside. Velas Jones also there. You bring in Marvin Jones maybe as a starter. Velas Jones isn't ready. He'd be a nice perimeter guy to pair along with Mooney. Jackson Smith and Jigba, that's kind of where you get your size. But I think that's a way, way better receiving core. I feel pretty good about that actually going into this next season. Giving Justin Fields the tools to be able to succeed, not just in the run game, but in the pass game with Jackson Smith and Jigba and some other pickups, you know, whether it's Marvin Jones and hopefully Velas Jones in year number two, Darnell Movie, if he can keep stepping up, playing better, then that's going to be huge for them too. Uh, running back wise, yes, I would love to bring David Montgomery, but if you don't, there's a free agent spot. You can bring in someone there behind Tristan Epter, who maybe he can be a guy who can rotate in down the line too. And then offensive line wise, hopefully bring in Michael Schofield back, but Jared Patterson as our new starter there at the center position. I feel way better. Cody Whitehair, Tevin Jenkins, that's a decent interior, man. I think that's a decent enough job. Whitehair, Patterson, good pass protector. Jenkins got some mauling ability there as he continues to get better as a pass protector. And then a free agent tackle. If Braxton Jones isn't your guy, you know, if he really struggles after this versus Dallas and some of these other teams, and it's like, ooh, we're a little concerned, bring in a, a, you know, a solid dude to come in there and be able to be a starter. Larry Borum, I think, like I said, is a bridge. Solid player, good, you know, solid starter for you. Maybe not elite, but a solid starter can get the job done. And then tight end, you know, mainly just free agency there. So on to the defense now, what we've been able to do. Our big thing was adding Jared Verse onto the defensive line. Whether that's interior, whether you find an edge player like a Bradley Chubb or a Yannick Ngakwe in free agency, and then you want to go interior defensive tackle and you could take a shot on like Gervin Dexter or you could look at someone like Kalija Kansi or whatever. If you're trying to find that three tech onto that interior instead of doing free agency deep tackle, you could do that and find an edge rusher in the draft uh, in like the fourth round and kind of 
switch them up, right, and find one in free agency there. So there's a lot of different possibilities, but nonetheless, all what it needs to be, improve the defensive line. You add in one of those defensive tackles we talked about in free agency, add Keanu Benton to come in there in a rotation early on. Armin Watts, bring him back if you can. You could let Justin Jones go. Keep him if you want. It's fine. Jared Verse, Dominic Robinson, Travis Gibson, Alquin and Muhammad would be that rotation going into this next season. Added some speed and some explosiveness there with Jared Verse. Linebacker-wise, you know, again, there's a lot up in the air with this, of course. It's one of the toughest positions for me to project going into this for right now. But hopefully you bring back one of those guys, like a Nicholas Morrow, maybe he'd be cheaper. And then you'd go out and then bring someone else in to be uh, a linebacker to start for you. And then you draft Aon Henley as a developmental piece behind that guy and go from there and bring back Matthew Adams would be a solid option too. And then we just add in more corner depth. I think they'd be okay at safety. Just bring back a DeAndre Houston Carson or bring a free agent. And I didn't mention it, but that's something you could do. Now, if you lose Eddie Jackson, if you were to trade him, then we'd have to re-talk about this later on, which we'll do for sure. But anyway, that's it. That, that is going to be it here for the Chicago Bears for this how to fix the Chicago Bears and the mock draft and everything like that. So let me know what you think, Chicago Bears fans or any fans of football. What should you do? What should the Bears be looking at this offseason? Those are kind of my views, my takes on it. Hope everyone has a really good day. My name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing, of course. I hope you have a good day and I will talk to you later.